happy, happy Monday night. So if anyone is actually watching this on YouTube, happy Monday. This is our Monday night accountability and new members class. So the goal is to have all the new people on here and we are going over some really cool stuff today. I am Stars Tina and yes, I'm laying in bed. Yes, I'm uh, not at my desk. Mute yourself if you're just coming through, please. I don't know who that is right there. Couple announcements. So this is the last week of March Madness. Hey there, Crane Crane! Last week of March Madness. Uh, I think we've done amazing with the running club. I'm super proud of everyone who's been participating, who's going, whether you, you know, you're doing your best. That's the first thing I wanted to mention. Great, great job. Also, <clears throat> Renee, hopefully you're texting those people that are not here and not just staring at the screen <laughs> saying hop on. Wonderful. So as you guys know, Aisha is debomb.com and she has helped me create a team 2.0. What does a team 2.0 mean? That means once a month, we're doing a 60 to 72 hour fast. So next week we're doing 24, 48, 60 or 72. You decide where you want to go in regards to that fast. This month we did 60 next month at 72. And then she also motivated us to do a fast every single Sunday for 24 hours. I'm proud to say I failed every single week. I love failure because when you fail, it shows that you're doing something different, something outside your box, and it's okay to fail. It's okay. Uh, also, along with Elite Stars 2.0, every Sunday, we've been doing a 30-minute killer class by Beach Body Fit Body, whatever the fudge you want to call it. Fudge your body up on Sundays. It'll crush you at noon. Um, so that's that right there. With our classes, we have uh, the additional yoga class on Friday, which is awesome by Betsy. And that's it about the classes. Today, I really, really, really a thousand percent want to focus on nutrition. So by the end of this call, you will have a personalized meal plan. So if you're watching this right now, get a pen and paper because we are going to create your personalized meal plan. We're going to start first with a video to explain how to read a nutritional label because it's super important to know how to read a label. So this is a quick video we are going to watch to show you how to read a label because I say it, but some people don't listen. So maybe, just maybe you'll listen if someone else is, is, is showing it, right? Someone else. So here we go. All about the nutritional labels. Boom. Okay. 10 rules for reading a food label. It's easier than gassing up a spaceship. Reading a food label with all those scary words and numbers it's not as alien as you might think. We have created some straightforward rules that every earthling can follow. Rule one, food is fuel. The body burns food to live. Food is fuel for the body. The same way a spaceship burns gas as it zips in between the planets, the body burns food as you go about your busy day. I know it sounds silly, but to understand food labels better, we will follow our alien friend as he gasses up his spaceship. Rule two, fuel is burned. This creates energy or calories. The amount of energy obtained from digesting a set amount of food is called the calorie. The longer the trip through space, the more fuel or energy the spaceship needs. In a similar way, the more active you are, the more calories you burn. Rule three, know how much is in one serving. Sorry, it's not a gallon. Gas is measured by the gallon, but food is a little more complicated than fuel. It comes in different shapes, sizes, and containers. To understand how much energy the food you are eating contains, you must first know how big the serving size is. Thankfully, this is one of the first things a food label will list. Serving size is typically provided in cups or ounces, so measuring the food you plan to eat is the only way to know exactly how many calories it contains. Rule four. The calories listed are per serving. Please do not eat the entire box. The calorie listing is important because it tells you how much energy you get from eating one serving of food. Think of calories per serving the same way our alien considers how many miles he can travel with one gallon of gas. 
Since one serving of food contains a set number of calories, and the calories listed on the label are per serving, if you have multiple servings, you have to multiply the calories on the label by the number of servings to know the total calories you have eaten. For example, 232 calories times 10 servings equals 2,320 total calories eaten. Rule 5. Know the type of fuel or calories you are burning. There are three main ingredients in food that provide energy. Fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. If you add all three of these ingredients together, you can calculate the total calories. When our alien chooses his gas, he can choose from regular or premium grade. Both are still gas that his spaceship will use for energy, but the concentrations are different. The same is true for food, only there are way more than two food choices. Rule 6. How fatty is your fuel? Fat is the most concentrated ingredient in food. This means that a large amount of calories are present in a small amount of fat. When choosing foods, select those with healthy fats, like fish and nuts. But remember, a very little bit of fat burns for a long time and contains lots of energy. Rule 7. Sugar is too sweet for your tank. Carbohydrates are foods that are broken down into sugar by the body. If you are running a race that requires a lot of energy in a short period of time, carbohydrates are a good choice. However, if not burned right away, carbohydrates are stored almost immediately. Over time, diets high in processed carbohydrates have been tied to many health problems. Choose healthier foods with less than 20 grams of carbohydrates per serving. Rule 8. Premium fuel for the body has a lot of protein. Protein is the third and final ingredient in food that provides us with calories. When the alien chooses high-grade fuel, his spaceship runs smoother for many years. Premium fuel for the body is high in protein. Protein provides good energy levels, keeps your weight steady, and allows the body to repair itself and stay healthy for many years. Rule 9. Food ingredients should not be in a foreign language. The ingredients found in the food you are eating are at the bottom of the nutrition label. Chances are, if you cannot pronounce the ingredients, that food is not a healthy option. Rule 10. Fuel with too many ingredients will clog your engine. Our alien knows that fuel with a long list of ingredients is likely processed and contains fillers and preservatives that may be unhealthy for his spaceship's engine. In a similar way, choosing foods with a lesser number of ingredients that you can pronounce is a good way to make sure the food you are about to eat is less processed. That helps anyone. Do you understand? Do you guys look at food labels? Be honest. Talk to me. Do you look at food labels? Don't all speak at once. Yeah, I look at food labels. It became a big habit to nobody want to go in the store with me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> and we go, hey, come on, mommy. Come on, sit down. Why are you looking at the labels? I'm like, y'all don't leave me alone. So a couple, <laughs> things, at the a couple things I want to share with you guys, some must-haves that I do when I look at food labels. So when it comes to sugar, write this down. Anything over double digits, when you're looking at the food label for sugar, if it's over double digits, put it away, okay? Um, meaning don't pick it up, grab something else. Uh, right. Also, any, everyone understand that? X. X. Hello, hello, did you guys get that? I heard someone write sodium in there. Who's talking about sodium? Talk to me about your sodium. Oh. I did. I said I look for sodium when I look at the labels to see how much sodium. I try to get the least number as possible. What's uh, the food item? What's the number you look for with sodium, or you just look? For, what's the low number to you? Really, no sodium. But like, I just look. Like, and it depends what it is. Like, some things I've seen have sodium in it, and I put it back because it's not a necessity. But I don't know. It just depends. Okay. What else do you guys look at when you're looking at food labels? Mindy, do you look at food labels? Yeah, I do look at food labels and for the same thing, sugar and sodium and carbohydrates. What do you look for when you look at carbs? Um, 
that low number, like what he was saying in the video. Do you have a specific number that you look for when you're looking at carbs? No, I just try to keep it on the low side and then just keep track of um, the ebbs and flows. Like if it was high on one day, then I try the next day to make sure it was low or like not to do any. Cool, cool. So um, what I do for carbs, because pretty much everything is different for different people. For example, the nutrition, the drug and administration level, they're going to give like the basics for America. Like if you want to balance diet, it's going to be between 1500 to 2000 calories. I don't know about you. I hate reading, not reading labels. I hate counting calories. You know, I want to eat until I'm full. So the next video I'm going to show you is all about protein, but two things majorly that I look at. The one is sugar, making sure that that number is under 10, not double digits. Like if it's double digits or more, I don't even pick it up. Like Mindy said, the carbs keep it low. I know we have a lot of keto people that join us and keto people, they go for 20 to 30 a day, which is damn near impossible for some people. <laughs> so with that, each serving, you know, when there's like a, a container, I look for at least 20 or lower for the, for the, um, blah, 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 blah. Carbs. Thank Carbs. you. It's carbs. Going back to what Bethany was saying with the sodium, something of how they'll catch you with giving you too much sodium. And I noticed this when I was looking at a soup that my mother had. If you notice where it says serving size, sometimes it'll say two serving size and you don't see that too. And then if you ever look at like Campbell's soup or anything like that, it'll say sodium like a thousand but then it's really 2000 because it's two serving sizes. So I really wanted to talk, you know, focus on that right there. So when you pick it up, also going back to the ingredients. And of course, you know, we're human. You're going to go off to have, but when you're buying something, only buy something that you can actually read. Whole foods. If you're buying fruits and vegetables and that whole thing, you really don't have to worry about that. But if you're looking at that label and it's like, guess, come on, I got like, what is that? It's very important that you're putting, you know, certain things in your body. Today, I really wanted to concentrate. Hi, Elisa. I really wanted to concentrate on protein for various reasons. One, because I need it really bad. <laughs> As you guys know, my protein is very low. And uh, the next one is a really, really good one about pro. Oh, come on, video. That's the alarm for the meeting that I never uh, set. Anyone here have a Mac? I know like how difficult it is to get it. Here we go. Protein, protein. Everyone loves telling us how important protein is for our muscles. Some even made it into a slogan. <laughs> Can you believe that? But in this video, we're going to find out if it really is that important. Or can you still get all the good muscle gains without the protein gains? Actually, you know what? Hold on a second. I forgot I'm not sharing the total screen. Let me fix this. I have to make myself big. I like communication, guys. It would have been nice if someone would have said, Tina, we can't see the video. I could see, I could see it. The whole That's video? Cool. We saw the video. When it comes to building muscle, experts often recommend getting about 1.6 or more grams of protein no, per kilogram of body weight per day. However, okay. get all the good muscle gains without the protein gains. When it comes to building muscle, experts often recommend getting about 1.6 or more grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. However, this is not exactly feasible for everyone, both digestively and even financially, since many gym goers require purchasing protein supplements to reach these higher levels of protein. So if we do eat less than what is considered optimal, what can we really expect to happen? Looking through the research, one thing's for sure is that eating less protein does lead to less gains. But in terms of how much, it varies wildly from one study to the next. Which makes sense if we think about it. Protein, as important as it may be, is really only one factor among many factors in the fitness equation. So to deal with this variability, it's probably best to go over research reviews, evaluating all the relevant data and condensing it for us into more practical insights. One of which is a 2020 systematic review, where Tagawa and colleagues analyzed 66 relevant studies to evaluate a dose-response relationship between protein 
protein intake and lean mass gains. In their findings, based on an average intervention period of 20 weeks, they observed that for every 0.1 grams of protein per kilogram added to your diet, lean mass gains go up by 0.39 kilograms until you reach 1.3 grams of protein per kilogram, where then it goes up by only 0.12 kilograms. This review is one of the few, if not the only, research that extrapolated the data this way, giving us a visual and statistical insight on the relationship between lean mass gains and protein intakes. I do want to point out, though, that there was a wide range of subject populations included in this review. And although they did adjust for some factors like age, sex, and training, there are many other factors to consider. Perhaps a more relevant data set for people watching this video is from a 2018 systematic review, where Morton and colleagues investigated similar outcomes, but narrowed their scope to healthy young adults participating in resistance training. Although they did not evaluate the specific effect sizes, they did produce their own figure showing the magnitude of the dose-response relationship of protein intake and lean mass. And when we compare this figure to the figure from the previous review, the trends aren't all that much different. In fact, when the 2022 data is further adjusted for weight changes, since a lot of its data came from weight loss studies, they become even more similar. If there's only one thing you take away from this video, it should be these figures. Both show clearly that you can build muscle at lower protein intakes, but notably less the less protein you eat. But if you gradually increase your protein, then you can further enhance your growth. A few more tidbits worth mentioning. Older folks generally require more protein to stave off muscle loss, but they tend to respond the least with higher protein intakes when paired with resistance training. If you're cutting, more protein is important, as is resistance training, to preserve your muscles and improve fat loss. Beginners respond really well to resistance training early on, even at lower protein intakes. So if you're new, you do have some time to figure out your protein. In the 2018 review, the researchers found that trained individuals responded the best with higher protein intakes, recommending as much as 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram body weight per day for those wanting to fully maximize their growth. However, 1.6 should be fine for most. Before we close, let's go back once more to the figures. Yeah, you will build less muscle if you eat less protein, but you will still build muscle. Just make sure that you are resistance training, like lifting weights, on a regular basis. Down the line, if you can change your protein situation, then great, but don't feel like it's not worth pushing for your goals just because you're not getting the supposed optimal levels of protein. Getting close enough can still lead to great results, so keep at it. And that's it for this one. I hope you found this video useful. Also, please consider supporting the channel by becoming a channel. Help you? Did you aid you? Questions, comments? Talk to me. Did you understand? Do you understand? It is. Um. Oh gosh. You know that I had the gastric bypass years ago, like when they was first starting it. And that's what they put you on just before you have this surgery, of a lot of protein and you drop, I mean, I think I, I dropped like 40 something pounds in, a, in like two months time, almost a little less than that. It was like quick. And that was just drinking a lot of that, what's it called? Isolate, whatever, that, like that liquid protein. So I guess that that's how they, you could just drop it off a little bit quick, but I didn't. Get I it. So I, I agree in the past two, three, four weeks, I've been the last, this past week, I've been like double dosing. Like everything is all about the protein. I would love to see your face, Mindy, D, Ashley, Bethany, Bethany, I know you're with the baby. Um, and it's funny, I was talking to Aisha and I was like, yeah, I'm still losing weight, even though my period is here. And she says, cause you're eating meat, which is true. It's very, very important that you're eating the meat. So let's just say mother, how, how much do you weigh? One seven zero. One seven zero. So I multiplied that by 0.36, which comes out to 61 grams of protein a day. Again, the numbers I'm giving you are from the 
United States national, you know, their average and all that stuff. So it varies for each person. So that's a minimum that you should really get. And, you know, when you talk about carbs, depending on your diet, now, if you want to lose fat, you should definitely have your carbs super low. Cause I was, you know, I've been, I've been digging them, digging them a crates. You know, you got the DJs, they dig in the crates. I'm digging in my crates and my notes, my nutritional notes and all that stuff. And pretty much they're saying you should have like 40% of your, I'm sorry, 30% of your diet carbs. And it's like, oh my gosh, that's a whole lot. Especially if you're looking to lose fat. Uh, as I mentioned before, under hundred to 150 is, is pretty low for the average person. Again, you want to make your diet specifically for you. This next video I'm going to show you, this is like dedicated to Renee. This next video is dedicated for those people that are like, I don't know how to get a lot of protein in my system. It helped me a lot. This is our last one. I kind of went overboard. I'm sorry, crew. I went overboard with the videos because I was just like in study mode all since last week. And um, actually, let me stop sharing. Questions, comments. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Talk to me. I just wanted to know what was that number you said again, the protein I needed. 61. 61. Okay. Yep. 61. 61. But Here. Tina, how would you measure that? I mean, how would however much you weigh multiply that by 0.36? So how much? No, you like how would you know you're oh. getting? So when you look at your food, for example, and if you don't know, you can always Google it. I believe an egg is six ounces, but this next video is going to be game changer, game changer. Okay. When I saw it, I was like, ooh, let me tell you guys. I saw that this yogurt gave 25 grams of protein. The granola gave 25 grams of protein. I was in heaven. I was like, whoa. Now you do have to look at the carbs and the sugar on it. But to be honest with you these days, I'm not saying I don't care about the carbs and the sugar. I'm just saying I got to get my protein up for these this achy old blood in my system. <laughs> but you definitely want to look at the carbs and the sugar in yours. All right, here we go. This is for you. This is for you. Taking mm -hmm. in enough protein daily can be very difficult, even though it's essential for building muscle and improving your body composition. While carbs and fats are abundant in our overly processed diets, protein is a much more difficult macronutrient to get enough of, especially because foods that are high in protein and lower in carbs and fats are generally less palatable than foods that are higher in fats and carbs, but lower in protein. Take ice cream as an example and compare that to chicken breast. On top of all that, protein happens to be very filling, further increasing the difficulty of taking in the recommended 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight. So today I wanna give you guys a list of the best foods that'll easily help you add over 100 grams of protein to your diet with minimal prep time and work. And first, we have to start with egg whites. Part of the reason why egg whites are so easy is because you can simply take your carton of egg whites straight out of the fridge, pour them directly onto a frying pan and have them cooked in under five minutes. A typical egg white that's separated from the yolk will contain about four grams of protein with basically no carbs or fats. So if you wanted to get, let's say 20 grams of protein, you would have to break apart five eggs and separate the yolk from the egg white five times. For some people that could be a pain, which is why having a carton of egg whites in your fridge is one of the key strategies I recommend to ensure that you can always quickly add additional protein to your daily total. Liquid egg whites typically contain five grams of protein for every three tablespoon serving. One cup of egg whites will contain 26 grams of protein. So by having a cup and a half of egg whites, you can essentially take in 40 grams of protein very quickly and very easily. Another excellent source is canned fish like tuna. Just one can of tuna will contain about 25 grams of protein. One of the best things about tuna is that you can take it with you anywhere and you can easily eat it anywhere to add protein to your daily total. To make it even easier and more palatable, you might decide to go with flavored tuna packets instead. When you're ready to eat, all you have to do is open one of these pouches up and scoop out the flavored tuna with a fork. Flavors like sweet and spicy tuna truly taste great while containing only about four grams of combined fats and carbs, for 17 grams of protein. Two of these tuna packets throughout the day would add on 34 grams of protein, and they're really easy to eat because of convenience and the great taste. Another food that is actually considered a supplement, but it'll make it much easier to meet your daily protein target is of course, protein powder. The two most common types of protein powders are whey protein and casein. Both of these are dairy-based protein sources, and even though casein is a more favorable meal replacement since it has a slower digestion rate, it can cause digestion issues compared to whey. Whey protein, on the other hand, will digest faster, and that's why many people will drink whey protein 
directly after their workout. There's also a plethora of other protein powders, including egg protein, beef protein, pea protein, and rice protein, just to name a few. And all of these can help you meet your daily protein needs. You can increase your protein count even further by having your protein shake with skim milk instead of water. If you're trying to gain weight or bulk up, you can also add natural peanut butter or dried peanut powder to add more protein while making your protein shake taste even better. After doing these things, a simple protein shake can easily add 40 or more grams of protein to your diet on a daily basis. To be fair, protein powder is probably the easiest way to add protein to your diet. You can even take foods that are high in carbs like pancakes or waffles and replace some of the ingredients with protein powder. These kinds of recipes can be found online and can help turn many of your high carb meals into high protein meals. However, keep in mind that you don't want to abuse this little protein cheat code. You still want the vast majority of your meals to be made up of real food because of the micronutrients that come with eating a variety of real foods. But having a protein shake after your workout or adding it into one random meal throughout the day can make getting enough protein much, much easier. You'll also want to replace your high carb and high fat snacks for high protein snacks. One perfect example of this is beef jerky. Just one ounce of Jack Link's original beef jerky contains 12 grams of protein and only four to five grams of carbs per serving. If you buy the smaller package, it'll contain about three and a half servings per pouch. I don't know about you, but I can easily eat one of those smaller packages of beef jerky in just one sitting. That winds up being over 40 grams of protein for a very filling snack. A lot of people stop by places like 7-Eleven, Wawa, and Quick Check when they're hungry and when they want some kind of snack or small meal. And unfortunately, most of the time, most people will leave with something like chips, a pretzel, or a high carb sub. So instead of doing that, grab a package of beef jerky. It'll taste great like the way a snack should taste. It'll keep you away from the high fat and high carb snacks, and it'll help satisfy your cravings while also increasing your protein intake for the day. Next, we have rotisserie chicken. If you go to the store and buy raw chicken, it's gonna take you time to trim away the fat, cut it the way that you want, and of course, cook it. If you're not that great at cooking, many times something like chicken breast can come out very dry and bland tasting as well. On the other hand, chicken that's been cooked in a rotisserie will typically be much juicier and more flavorful. There's also enough protein in just one rotisserie chicken to meet all your protein needs for the entire day. There are many times that I've gone on vacation and simply bought a rotisserie chicken to easily handle all my protein needs. Even with inflation, rotisserie chicken is one grocery store item that continues to stay relatively cheap, especially in comparison to other high protein products. It'll save you a ton of time in meal prep and you can find it in almost any supermarket. If you're concerned about excess calories, you can remove the skin as that will reduce the calorie count by quite a bit since the skin can add anywhere from three to four times the amount of fat to your meal. Now, I'm not saying you can't eat the skin. All I'm saying is that the skin contains a lot of fat and that fat contains calories. So if you're trying to watch your caloric intake, it might be helpful for you to remove the skin. Another very simple option that could be eaten on the go is deli meat. There was a time where the only options that you had with deli meats were heavily processed brands loaded with nitrates, nitrites, and artificial ingredients. Luckily, there are much better options nowadays, especially if you have a local Whole Foods supermarket right next to you. But even if you don't, many stores have started carrying brands of deli meat that are much less processed. Unfortunately, all deli meat still does have to contain certain ingredients to preserve it and keep it from going bad. But using vinegar and sea salt is much better than using nitrates with caramel coloring as preservatives. So if you can get to a Whole Foods, their 365 oven roasted turkey breast simply uses vinegar powder and sea salt as curing ingredients. Right on the front of the package, it clearly states that no nitrates or nitrites are added and that it's not even preserved. Although, like I said, truthfully, they are using ingredients that help preserve it, just more natural ingredients. Just four slices of this oven roasted turkey breast contains 12 grams of protein and less than one gram of carbs and one gram of fats. If you prefer ham, this brand also makes uncured ham. It has slightly less favorable macros, but still very, very good. It contains 11 grams of protein, two grams of fat, and one grams of carbs for every four slices. Now, even if you don't have a Whole Foods by you, you might be surprised at the options offered in the deli section of whatever your local supermarket is, if you just take a look. Specifically look for brands that are nitrate and nitrite free using natural ingredients, ideally labeled as preservative free. These deli cuts can be used as a quick snack to add protein to your daily total if you're short on time or simply need the additional protein to hit your daily target. 
Now, if you don't like protein shakes, another option to easily add protein to your diet is to go with protein bars. But I will warn you, the vast majority of protein bars out there are loaded with fats and carbs. That's totally fine if you're trying to do a dirty bulk, but if you're trying to watch your calorie intake while upping your protein intake at the same time, you're gonna wanna go with the protein bar that's high in protein while still being low in overall calories. I found that the brand Pure Protein Bars has some of the best macronutrient profiles out there. Their protein bars are almost entirely made up of protein with minimal sugars and fats. Quest also makes protein bars that are low in carbs and fats, but you have to check the nutrition label on each one because some of them are actually high in carbs and fats. In either case, these protein bars typically provide around 200 calories. And remember, just like the protein shakes, you don't want to overuse these as you won't get the other nutrients that come with whole foods. Another very quick protein source that can be used instead or along with the egg whites are hard-boiled eggs. Making hard-boiled eggs is very easy and can be done very quickly. You just put the eggs in water and boil them for about five minutes. Then you can bring those hard-boiled eggs pretty much anywhere with you and eat them even if you're in a rush. Just one large egg will contain about six grams of protein. This makes it easy to add 20 to 30 grams of protein to a meal that you can take with you absolutely anywhere. Most of the protein in the egg actually comes from the egg white portion, but the egg yolk also contains some protein along with a bunch of beneficial micronutrients, and there's no denying the yolk tastes good. Next is cottage cheese. Fat-free cottage cheese will contain anywhere from 13 to 15 grams of protein per half cup serving. Cottage cheese does, of course, have to stay refrigerated unlike some of the other options, but when you need that protein, it's right there ready for you. You don't have to prep anything, although some people do like to do things with their cottage cheese to make it tastier. For example, the cottage cheese can be used to make delicious tasting recipes like pancakes. Some people will also add some fruit to their cottage cheese like berries or pineapples. Just like with yogurt, which can be another option instead, I don't recommend that you get the variations that already have fruit mixed in because simple sugars are added into those to make them taste better. Adding your own fruit instead will save you from adding unnecessary sugar into your diet. Finally, one last easy source of protein that you can eat without any meal prep is sardines. Sardines in water will contain about 13 grams of protein and six grams of fat. Okay, sardines, like some of the other options, offer an easy way to get some additional sardines. protein. <laughs> Would I be correct in saying that? <laughs> what was the last part of what you said? The I don't think anyone here is going to eat sardines. My coach used to eat sardines. She would have them in the gym. Ooh, it's Mount Harbor. Hi, Dee. Hey, girl. Hey. I ate some sardines yesterday. I eat them at least once a week. Okay, you're getting those numbers in there. So as you can see, it's super important that you do what's best for your body, especially when it comes to protein, keeping those carbs super low. To be honest with you, lately, I haven't been counting my carbs. I've just been thinking about protein and making sure I just have carbs once a day. And like I said, I am losing, I do see a big difference in the muscle definition. Um, what are you guys thoughts? Do you agree, disagree? Give me your thoughts on everything that you've seen today. I'm just happy that he said that my uh, beef jerky, I can eat it. <laughs> I don't feel so guilty because like that beef jerky at lunchtime, baby, let me tell you. <laughs> so, I've been worried about the sodium of beef jerky yeah, though. That's what I was. Yeah. I've never looked at the nutritional label of it. So I don't know. Yeah. What All right. Oops. So it's every other day <laughs> that I get it. So. <laughs> So why do you do it every other day, Ashley? What is it? What, what's your concern with it? Is it the sodium or what's your, well, what's your apprehension with it? You said that she said, because you guys just said that she said every other day. Um, so the reason why I get it is one is they're, they're very expensive at the corner store and I can't afford that. I have a whole relationship with my money and uh, <laughs> money always wins. <laughs> well, don't get them at the corner store, get them at like Costco or whatever. What is a Costco? Or like Sam's Club. And um, <laughs> I don't have a Costco here. I live in Michigan. Come on now. Like she's ready to explode. Are you ready to Or Meyer? Get it at Meyer. Okay, there we go. Okay. Get right. it at Meyer. Yeah. There you go. D, are you ready to explode? You're muted, D. I was watching D's face. Like <laughs> now I'm surprised she didn't have. A Costco. I was like, what? Uh, 
Now, so again, everyone knows I'm on the ketogenic lifestyle. So I, we already, I already eat high protein. And for us, beef jerky clean um, is good. So like I eat the ones that's not flavored, um, grass fed. And I get that from like Trader Joe's. Oh yeah, that's something I meant to say too. When we're eating this meat, make sure it's grass fed with the fish. Make sure that it's, is it wild caught? You know, I'm new wild to Wild caught, not farmed. I'm new to this whole thing, wild caught and grass fed. Um, and Aldi's has very, very, very inexpensive options when it comes to that. Much, even cheaper than um, Trader Joe's. Mm. Aisha, can you show your face really quick so we can take a quick photo? What is Trader Joe's? Oh my god, girl. <laughs> Where, you live in Maine. Like, do you live in Detroit? Hold on. Get ready for the photo. Then we're going to do intros. Photo in three. Come on, Crin Crin. Fix your background. Trying to look all sexy. Photo in three, two. Got that photo. All right. I'm going to talk. Do you live in Detroit? No, I live two hours from Detroit. Girl. North of Detroit? What part? Yeah. Two hours north of Detroit. What's the name of your city? <gasps> what? Saginaw. I put it in the chat. And, and were so you born there? You're like a, you're a yupper, or what is that called? A upper? A yupper? No, I'm not a yupper. I am never, <laughs> no. <laughs> disrespectful. Very, very disrespectful. <laughs> I'm going to turn it over to Renee so we can do wins of the week. My win for this week, I went to an amazing International Women's Summit this weekend, virtually learned so much about business and super excited. Uh, people like Elena Cardone, Stormy Wellington, uh, Les Brown's daughter was on there. It was just so much ah, information. So I'm feeling super charged and um, I'm throwing it over to Renee so she could take over for our... Uh, our intros and our highlights. Let's go for it, Renee. You go up. All right, um, Miss Hattie, I see you in the top corner. What was your win for the week? My win for the week, I lost another pound. Yay. And I'm still training. Tina's beating me, but that's okay because I said, <laughs> I have to listen to my body also. I could have went out there, but I just said, it's cold. I'm not going out. You know, let her get this win on. She needs it. <laughs> awesome. Hey, Kren Kren, I know what your win for the week was. You're muted. Can't hear you. Can you guys hear Still no? No, no, I can hear you. Oh, I had a birthday. I turned 52. <laughs> Happy birthday, Craig. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. It's your birthday. You got a party like it's your birthday. Don't so drink a party like it's your birthday. Right, so I'm supposed to be where you at right now with like my three suitcases and we gonna party? <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> Was, did you have anything else, Kron? Oh, she's muted again. Um, No, nothing on me. I didn't lose, I didn't gain. Um, Yeah, so that's about it. You know, awesome. actually, I enjoyed my birthday this year. You know, normally I don't. Yeah. But this year I enjoyed it. Yeah. Last year you still had your broken ankles, didn't you? I was in the hospital. Yep. Two broken ankles laid up. <laughs> hey, D. You're up. You're muted. Now you gotta slow down. It take me a minute to find the button. <laughs> you know, I work with, with Tina. I know you work with Tina. She'd be like, 
Um, I um, I guess I started back on my morning routine, like waking mm -hmm. up and stuff. So I just mm -hmm. gotta get back into my morning workout classes. But I started waking up again at like five, which I have fell off severely. Well, that's good. Are yeah. you feeling like that it's once you started doing it, it's like not a big deal or you're are you struggling i'm still i'm still getting back into it like right now i'm tired child it's 7 40 i'm tired yeah did you finish with your your um well i guess you're here so the answer is probably yes but you, i know you were going through a busy season at yes. work the taxes and stuff. yes i finished that thank god so on to the next awesome all right danya hi Hello. What was your win for the week? Um, I helped my family, like, um, we weeded our front yard finally, mm -hmm. um, cause it was just looking a mess. And, um, I actually was the one to kind of like start it off. Like I just decided, okay, I'm going to do this on Saturday morning. And I did it. And then my mom wanted in and she got my sisters involved and everything. So we were happy to get it done. And it didn't take as long as I thought it would. Um, and uh, yeah, that was, that was the plus. <laughs> it's, it's nice when people, like you said, join in and do it together and, and get it done and right cooperation. So yeah. Hi, Aisha. Aisha crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you just see what she, she said. said her period ended. She said her <laughs> period ended. <laughs> and it's all pause when I walk into the room. She got yeah, the I, I really, all I'm pause. Inside, I'm inside my daughter's school, so I can't really talk. That's why I put it in the chat. Uh, <laughs> well, Aisha, you got the men up pause? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> This is still the, the oh, you know, the full flow. <laughs> oh gosh, you're funny. Hi, Ashley. Hey, girl. Hey, my win for the week. Um, I was able to do a lot of my 3D printing, taking that 2D to 3D. Um, a lot, I got a lot of people who wanted their logos done. So that uh, pitch. It started to get some conversions. Hey, hey, hey. And then, sadly, my printer it decided not to work anymore. <laughs> so sad. So I sad. thought you just got it. I know. And I broke it myself. It's uh -oh. okay. It's okay, though. It's a $12 fix. $12 fix. I got it. It'll be here Friday. Okay. <laughs> but that's it. Been other than that, I'm good. I'm a bless, highly favored, mm. <laughs> and I'm amazing. <laughs> Don't forget it. Yeah. All right. That's all I have. All right. Mindy. Well, you all know I saw, I put that in the chat earlier that I was cleaning out my closet. Oh, I didn't see that. I must have been. So that's good. You um. So is that that's what you're focused on? Just like going through stuff that's not needed anymore? Well, yeah, um, I have a, a student in my class that is um, terrible. I'm just going to say terrible. And I think she put red paint on my <gasps> chair. Uh. And so on Friday... Uh, I was walking down the hall and one of the teachers was like, oh, you got something on you. And I had a hysterectomy in 2012. So uh, when she was like, you got something red on the back of your pants, I was like, <laughs> no, yeah. no, I don't. And so it was red paint and, uh, and it's acrylic. And I was like, Ugh. and uh, I only have like two pair of jeans for the size that I am yeah. now. And so I was like, well, let me just go. And so when I went shopping, um, I was like, oh, I'm the next size smaller. And so I was like, that's great. So, so now I was like, well, let me go through and like get rid of these other. So 
Um, That's amazing. I thought you were talking about this meat chat, but yeah, I saw that in the, the WhatsApp <laughs> chat. That was really good. Yeah. So I realized that like over the past year and a half, I'm now I'm down like four sizes. So that, mm -hmm. so this, this was like the next. Yeah. So that was like, you know how like it just happens and then you just like, don't ever. So that was my, my figuring that out. So yay. <laughs> it, it's a, um, it's a great feeling, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So my win for the week is despite Aisha trying to kill us with these beach body, um, what was it? Beach body work. You did it, Mindy. <laughs> <laughs> yes the beach body workouts <laughs> it's worth it it's worth it Aisha go ahead keep on doing it no. I am we're, we're gonna do different stuff I got some some dance ones so like Shanti has like sides I have country heat I have bar I have um plyo which is like pilates and um yoga so I'm gonna I'm gonna switch it up so we've done boxing and then we did like a circuit and and we're going to do something else this week. So you got to come and see. Yeah, I was just joking with her. They're really, really good. We started um, two Sundays ago. Yesterday was the second one. And they're really good. So we would love it if you guys join us. It's on Sundays at noon Eastern time. You, I, I didn't hear you, Dee. Oh, I'm in church. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I, I gotta get my praise on on some days. So but no, I, I get to that. I get I, to, I get a two-step in for y'all and y'all get the beach body going. <laughs> you will be you can just be thinking of us. <laughs> but yes, but thank you, Aisha, for for um helping us to have that class on, on uh, Sundays. You are very welcome. And it gets me moving too. So it's like a double win. <laughs> All right. Does anyone else have anything to share or say questions, concerns, comments before we get out of here? Yeah, I do. So last week, my heart was broken when I had to not buy a pineapple this week. So <laughs> I got to convince myself that not buying a pineapple is, is okay. So what if I, I like to put the pineapple in my water, like a pineapple mango in, for infusion. Mm -hmm. Does that still kind of break down the sugar in my water? D? Um, so D what, what, what are you using the pineapple for? water infusion water, water okay so there's so many other other things that you can infuse your water with that tastes good like berries and mints i promise you you muddle it a little bit it's good you don't need the pineapple the sugar that the pineapple has does a bigger disservice than the goodness that you like to have and if you really want something that can uh Ice up your water. There's a, a drop. It's called Stir, S-T-U-R. It's better than Crystal Light because Crystal Light has sucralose and Mio's have sucralose, which dest destroys healthy gut bacteria. But this Stir, S-T-U-R, it comes in a variety of flavors and it spices up your water. You get it off Amazon. It's stevia-based. And it's, it's, it gives you a look, it makes you feel like you're drinking juice. Yeah, I accidentally, a few, well, it wasn't an accident. I was trying, not trying. I did supplement that pineapple with another flavor. So I did uh, lemon, cranberry, and peppermint. I okay. actually, liked, actually liked it. So, that's yeah. good. And low sugar, that's real good. You see, you don't need the pineapple. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the answer to like, so D just answered you basically that even though it's sitting probably in that little cylinder that goes in your water bottle, it's getting that sugar into your water. So you're drinking it. And I don't know it, who, um, like I have a glucose monitor 
I don't have mm -hmm. the continuous one, but I take my blood sugar. And you'll mm -hmm. be surprised, Ashley, if you want proof, scientific proof that it affects you, take your blood sugar before, have a drink of that water and take it after, and you'll see that the glucose has spiked. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, darling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, anything else? I feel like I'm counting down a clubhouse room. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye guys. Have a great rest of your evening. Bye. Oh, bye. Bye.